Hello guys and welcome back to the HJW Gaming Channel. In this video I'm going to be looking into or explaining which commanders I believe are the best commanders for good side when you're starting a new season. These aren't necessarily the best commanders for PvP, just simply taking tiles and preventing losses the best possible. Without further ado, let's look into the video. I really hope you enjoy. So first up I'm going to look at Tier 1 commanders. If you're playing as Rohan, or potentially even Gondor as well, then Eowyn could be a very good choice for starting commander. Equipment wise, I'd recommend equipping her with something like the Cutlass, which can boost her might and speed, and also her melee unit's attack. Armour, Scout's Mail is a good choice, with either Deftness or also Shroud. You could also run the Superior Hauberk with Shroud as well, as that gives your army defence and additional might. Though I would say the Shroud's, uh, Scout's Mail sorry, is probably better. Headgear wise, I'd recommend the Horseman's Helm, but not with Warding like I have here. I'd recommend it with Resolve, so that you get Madness Immunity, as Eowyn herself can provide Stun Immunity. Uh, this is great because it gives 15 defence to your mounted units, and also additional Might and Speed. And for an accessory, I would recommend using the Hithlane, uh, with Mend preferably, which gives you bonus Might, additional HP for your army, and also Mend provides that bonus healing so that you can keep as many troops alive by the end of the battle as possible. Skill-wise, Eowyn does have a lot of strong skills for early game. Notably, a White Lady of Rohan skill tree is very useful, particularly if you're playing as Rohan, as I said, using cavalry, as this provides a 2% HP heal every single round for mounted units. Once maximised, of course, up to 15 points, which I would recommend doing first, you get 30% healing every round, and you also gain stun immunity, which can be huge. The second skill I'd recommend putting into her would be Frontline Rescue. So this means that on round 3, you also gain an additional 300% heal. Healing is essential early game, and one of the main things that make commanders so good for early tiling, as healing, of course, keeps as many t uh, troops as possible alive, so that you lose the minimum possible. Uh, nobility could be a good choice, as if you're using men units, it can increase their damage, though I'd say that's not the priority here. We're trying to minimise damage to begin with. Uh, the Durnelm skill tree, again, not really recommended, as this increases commander damage, doesn't save our troops. The Rohirrim skill tree, however, would definitely be the second place I'd recommend putting your skill points, as... Whilst the Shield, Ma Shield Maiden skill tree does reduce damage, I'd recommend putting it in Rohirrim as that increases your mounted unit's damage, but also gains you access to the uh, mounted excellence skill tree as well, which is a flat damage reduction. So if you put these points into Rohirrim, you get bonus damage and you get damage reduced. So once you've spent these points here, uh, what's this, uh, 44 points, you have an excellent base build for Eowyn. Of course, 44 points won't be available at the beginning, but you'll easily have enough to, usually have enough anyway, to maximise White Lady of Rohan at least, so you can gain some healing if you're planning on using her uh, for the early tiles, and then you can build towards having a Rohirrim and mounted uh, riding excellence. Any spare points I would then put into Cleave, because of course now, you, now you're moving towards her more... Um, PvP focus build, you don't have to reset her points, you can just put points into cleave, points into nobility, and then your remaining points into shield maiden, and you then find yourself with uh, my recommended PvP build, uh, which is very strong and can be very useful. So for a second tier 1 unit, we're now going to look into Dwalin. In my opinion, he is probably the best tier 1 tiler, because he's completely universal his skills do not necessarily rely on using one type of troop so you don't have to use dwarf units so he can use any troop at all so he's good with any faction for example Eowyn I said has to has to be with mounted units with uh, Dwalin you can use him on anyone at all equipment wise I would recommend equipping him with the battle axe with the flay effect in my opinion, the Flay is best, as it ignores uh, enemy's armour, so allows his might-based attacks just to absolutely cut through the enemy armour. 
And the battle axe provides massive might, which is the most important thing for Dwalim. Armour-wise, I usually go with the quilted armour, as this provides really good might, a little bit of focus, uh, and I also quite like the focus protection, particularly for late PvP. But for the start of the game, potentially the scale mail could be better, as it provides a little bit less might, but it does boost your um, troop defence by 15, and also you can get it with melee vigour to reduce the damage your melee units take by up to 6%. Helm-wise, either the Bone Mask or the Full Helm, in my opinion, are good choices. I like the Bone Mask as it uh, increases your HP of your army uh, by 3, as well as providing some might. And also the Hysteria can inflict the opponent with madness on every third round, so they may hit their own troops rather than yours, reducing the amount of damage you take. Though, of course, a Melee Vigor Helm does boost that might by more, and can also flat reduce damage by 6%. As for accessory again, the Hith Lane is also a good choice, but if you're using Dwarves, something like Erebor's Pride is very good, because it boosts the HP of your Dwarves by 6. Though of course, if you're using those kind of universal troops that aren't Dwarves, I'd recommend going with the Hith Lane, just for that additional healing. So usually you'd build um, Dwalin, you know, with the Experienced Warrior Tree, the Durin's Blood Tree, and then some amount of the Warrior of the Lonely Mountain Tree, just to get that maximum damage for PvP. However, building him for early game as a tiler, we're going to want to look to try and maximise the Musician skill tree as soon as possible. Musician skill tree provides us with 15% bonus speed and defence, as well as plus 3 attack, which is uh, excellent, particularly on that defence. But then we also want to put points into level-headed and relief, which provide massive heals. So level-headed removes one random debuff and recovers 120 HP every 3 rounds, and uh, Relief also provides a heal, so you get up to, well, up to uh, 228% healing modified by the Focus effect uh, for your unit with highest defense, again, every three rounds. So that's just an enormous amount of healing you can get to keep your troops alive. And as you level up, if you get any more skill points, I'd recommend putting them in the Warrior of the Lonely Mountain skill tree, because this can provide up to a flat 15% physical damage reduction. So there you have a massive amount of damage reduction uh, to help you with your early tiling. In my opinion, Dwalin's one of the best tile takers in the game. I'd probably have him as... I almost always use him as my secondary, secondary tile taker. So into tier 2s, this is probably the best tile taker in the game in my opinion. Uh, this is Gandalf the Grey. So Gandalf the Grey just has an awesome mix of uh, damage, uh, well troop damage, and also stuns and damage avoidance. It's really excellent. For equipping him, I'd recommend using either a Carver or an Noldor Sword with Smite or Mind Split. If you don't have these, you can use either an Elven Dirk or a Mirkwood Bow with Pierce. You're basically looking for the effect to have additional bonus damage. The Noldor Sword is probably the best you can get, as it has a higher chance of inflicting that bonus damage at 50% compared to 35% on the Carver. You'll see why this is important a little bit later. Armour-wise, you can go with kind of almost anything. The Elven Cloak or something like that is particularly useful for bonus HP and additional focus. Focus will affect uh, Gandalf's healing, so you'll get additional healing. Again, Scale Mail can also be very useful for boosting that defensive stats on your army and also reducing damage taken by your melee units. Either one will be useful. Helm-wise... I quite like the Trapper's Hood. Similar to what I said about the Bone Mask, Hysteria is very useful as it can inflict madness to make you not take damage every third round if they deal damage to their own troops. And you also get additional focus from the Hood. And lastly, we like the Worn Out Smoking Pipe for that maximum amount of focus. You could use the Wizard's Fireworks as well as that also provides an amount of focus. And you can also use that with uh, Mend instead of Sustain potentially as that will also provide some healing, though Sustain, in my opinion, when you've, is probably the better heal, as if you use three units, Sustain provides additional healing. But if you're going to use ranged units for damage, the Wizard's Firework will increase their attack by three. Skill-wise, you're going to want to look to put two points into Wizard as soon as possible. The reason for that being is that you can inflict that early, uh, early round stun, the round one stun, to stop the opponents from inflicting early damage. You also can reduce their de uh, defense by 10 points. You then want to put one point into Surge, 
The reason for that is you want to then put points into the grey. So I put four points here. You'll see that the grey, it provides a 50% chance of healing whenever uh, Gandalf the grey himself deals damage. So if we then put the one point into blindside as well, that gives us an additional stun round two. And then when blindside and surge inflict damage, we get additional healing from the grey. The next choice of skill points is kind of up to you. You can go with the evasion, uh, the, the top sub skill of the grey, but I prefer to go and put points into Mithrandir. The reason for this is Mithrandir provides that damage debuff of the opponent, so it reduces damage you take further, and also provides access to Convener, which is Gandalf the Grey's best skill. Not only does Convener provide initiative, meaning that they act first this round for the first two rounds, it also gives you a 75% chance of follow up meaning that your units can attack twice in this round. Double damage is huge, so you're not only attacking first and attacking twice, you're just massively slaughtering the opponent's troops. And if you think then, when they then come back to inflict damage upon you, if they've only got half their troops left, they're going to in inflict significantly less damage. So Convener then is probably the best skill to get as early as possible. After that, you can then focus on maximizing the gray, so that then you can get that additional healing. Then you can focus on the evasion. And then lastly, you can put whatever you've got left into free peoples for a flat damage reduction. And if you have a high respect Gandalf, you might have some more points kicking around, at which point you can put these into white council again for further damage debuffs. And this basically then leaves you with the classic uh, Gandalf the Grey build, which is excellent for fighting a good side. So you don't need to respec his skills and spend those 20 gems. But the main thing to focus on is getting that two points in Wizard, one in Surge, a couple of points in the Grey, one in Blindside, then focus on Mithrandir and Convener. Because then you have a lot of early round stuns from, from Blindside and Wizard. You have damage coming from uh, your Carver or your Noldor Sword as well as Blindside and Surge, all of which then continue to activate the Grey as the more instances of damage you have, the more uh, chances you have of activating the grey and getting that healing. And then troop-wise, you've got massive damage in the early rounds coming from, um, coming from Convener, allowing them to do early damage and follow-up. So basically, you just smash your opponent hard and early whilst massively reducing any damage they can inflict on you, so you gain a massive early round advantage. This is what makes Gandalf such uh, so much better than any other Tyler in my opinion so if you have him definitely focus on uh, on on him to be honest he's there's no situation where you shouldn't be using Gandalf as he can also use any troops at all he's not limited uh, to a particular race of troops next up on my tier two list I do have Theoden I think Theoden can be a strong starting commander similar to Eowyn you have to have either uh, Rohan or potentially Gondor as well you have to have these mounted units early or else it's not really worth using him. I do think for early tiles at least, until Theoden's leveled up, I do think Eowyn is probably the better tiler. So I'd recommend using her if you have her at high respect level. Though Theoden does also do a decent job tile-wise. Equipment, he's very similar to Eowyn. So I'd recommend using a Cutlass again for those melee units, particularly for early rounds. Later in the game, you can use something like the Mirkwood Bow or the Elven Dirk if you're looking to use a Bow Knight's build on Theoden for PvP. But for early tiling, you'll likely be using melee units, so just stick a Cutlass on him. Armour again is similar. Either the Scout's Mail or the Scale Mail will both be strong, just for that bonus might so we can do more damage, and also bonus speed for activating Rohirrim. Helm again, the Horseman's Helm, though this time I'd recommend using war, um, using Warding rather than Resolve, as he doesn't have natural stun immunity the same way Eowyn does. And accessory-wise, the Hith Lane again, just because it's the only purple rarity accessory that uh, gives bonus might. You could also use the Mieras Reins if you have them, as that will grant your mounted units bonus HP and attack. Talking about HP and attack, the first skill you want to uh, put points into will be Horsemaster. Looking to try and maximise this as soon as possible. Uh, the reason being is that 15 attack on mounted units is absolutely massive. And when it's maxed, you also get a bonus. Uh, I believe it's 5 HP, which is huge again. 
And then you want to look towards putting points in the air red leader skill as well. This provides that healing. As I've said, healing is essential for tiling. So we can then get an each round HP um, recovery for all of your mounted units. Once this is maximized, air red leader, it is actually a better heal than uh, Eowyn's White Lady of Rohan. So that's the point where he kind of overtakes Eowyn as a, as a Tyler once you're able to get those points in. And then similar to Eowyn, the next skill we want to put points into will be Rohirrim because you can get that massive increase in damage, particularly if you look at Theoden's speed. He does have more speed than Eowyn, so he's better able to increase that damage that comes from Rohirrim. And then we can put points in Riding Excellence, which does give us that 14% damage reduction as well. Basically, you're left with a commander that massively boosts damage of your troops and massively reduces the damage they take. So you can hit hard and hit quickly. So, of course, he's a brilliant Tyler, particularly um, once you get him leveled up. So, yeah, definitely recommend using him if you're a mounted faction. And last but not least, not least for my further T3, I'm going to go with who, in my opinion, is one of the best Tylers in the game particularly if you have access to elven units. This is Gilgalad. Equipment-wise for Gilgalad, you're going to look massively towards buffing elf units. So if you have it, the elven white knife is brilliant as it provides a massive boost to your might. Also grants up to six attack boost for your elves, which is huge. And if you get the might of elves effect on it too, it gives a further damage buff to your elves. If you don't have this available, the Elven Dirk with Elf Might is also useful, although I would probably recommend the Mirkwood Bow with Elf Strength, as then you still get plus three bonus attack towards your ranged units, which is where most damage from Elves comes from, and you can additionally get Elf Strength on this too. Equipment-wise, uh, the High Elf Hauberk is very strong, though you can also again use the Scale Mail. Elves can be a little bit squishy, they don't have massive defense, so you're basically just looking to get that defense up as much as possible to reduce your damage. Uh, either Fortitude of Elves or Resistance of Elves is very good on the High Elf Hauberk, and then on a Scale Mail, Melee Vigor, just to keep those uh, Wardens alive, essentially, or Heralds, depending on where you get to with your troop conscription. Helm-wise, we're going to look towards uh, using the High Elf's Helmet, with Fortitude of Elves. Again, as I said, the Elf units are very squishy, so getting that defense up is priority. So this provides additional defense for your Elves, and Fortitude of Elves, once again, provides a massive damage debuff. If you don't have this, again, the Trapper's Hood is pretty much universally one of the best good side items for early game, inflicting that madness and giving us bonus attack on our ranged units, which if you start as an Elven faction, of course, you start with ranged units, so reducing their damage uh, and improving their own damage is particularly useful. And as for accessory, you want to look towards using the Harp of Lothlorien. So you have many choices on this. I wouldn't recommend Hunter's Mark, as many tiles don't use avoidance. And, uh, for taking early tiles, I would actually recommend Sustain, as that additional healing um, is excellent, as Gilgalad doesn't actually provide a heal. So having some additional healing can be brilliant for keeping troops alive. But you could also use Elf Strength, which is the best harp in my opinion for PvP. Uh, maybe aside from Hunter's Mark, depending on who, uh, which commanders you're facing. But Elf Strength is also good for just flat increasing your damage. Skill-wise on Gilgalad, he does have a lot of really strong skills. So first up is Icicle, which is always worth putting one point in, just because you can deal that stun every third round. So an opponent being stunned every three rounds is massive, as of course that basically reduces their damage over a whole 10 round fight by a third if they're stunned on rounds three, six, and nine. Next up, he does also have High King and Kingly Kin, which are both very strong uh, early round skills. High King can flat reduce the damage taken by your elves by up to 15% and also provide an additional three HP. Kingly Kin provides a... Uh, provides a really good evasion for your units. So that would probably be the skill I'd recommend maximizing first. Of course, if you're gonna put points in Kingly Kin, as you've seen here, make sure you do that before putting the one point in Icicle, as you can't unlock the other uh, rank zero skill until you've put five points into one of the others. 
But if you maximize Kingly Kin, you have a 70% chance of, of evading damage for the first two rounds, which of course is massive, taking no damage for two rounds whilst you continue to put out a lot of damage. Exorbitance is the sub skill, which is very useful as it increases the damage of all of your melee units by uh, up to 14%. But first I would put 15 points into High King, just to again get that damage reduction. And this gives us access to Elven Leader, which is huge. As, as I said with Gandalf, follow, how, uh, how much of an advantage follow-up can be. Elven Leader allows us to get follow-up every single round, or at least a 25% chance of that. Following that, I'd put seven points then into Exorbitance, and then end with seven points in Chaotic Retreat. Anything spare you have left, I'd put into White Council. But as a starting commander, just getting those points into Kingly Kin and one into Icicle is priority, as because then you can evade damage and also provide stuns. So this is huge, because you just then take much less damage uh, and can take tiles very, very easily. As, as Gilgalad levels up, he becomes a better and better tiler, as you can see, because he gets more evasion, more damage reduction, and then can also provide that follow-up. This, in my opinion, makes him one of the best tilers in the game. So now I have a few special mentions here. These are commanders which, in my opinion, are not one of the top five tilers, but are still very strong. The first of these is Arwen. So Arwen's an elven commander who is focus-based, so I'd look to give her similar equipment to Gandalf the Grey, uh, just something which all equipment should try and boost her focus as much as possible. Um, so potentially like a carver with smite, scale mail, uh, the trapper's hood, and then again the harp of Lothlorien. This can provide her a lot more focus. The reason for this is if you look into Arwen's skill trees, I of course don't have her rank fives, I personally don't use her. However, her skill trees do provide a lot of healing. So her Queen of the Reunited Kingdom uh, does a massive damage reduction, uh, which uh, slowly erodes during combat. Once fully maximised, it takes five rounds for this to go away. She does also have the Parting Gift heal, though this only activates in round seven, so isn't great. Uh, but the main place where Arwen is very, very strong is in her Undomiel skill tree. So Undomiel provides a massive amount of healing. So for two units, you get a 35% chance uh, to heal up to 48% uh, HP, which is a huge amount of healing when you consider that this activates every single time damage is sustained. So if your units get hit three times, you get this a chance of activation three times around. You also get Cleansing Touch, which activates every three rounds, uh, which allows you to recover a amount of HP and similar Elving Blessing activating every three rounds for more HP healing. Whilst this does sound amazing that she has a huge amount of healing, in my opinion this isn't as good as Gandalf the Grey, for tiling wise anyway, as while she does provide a lot of healing, she doesn't provide much troop support, so actual damage provision from the rest of her skills, so your units are left doing not a huge amount of damage. So you're healing constantly, but not doing a huge amount of damage, which in my opinion makes her kind of a a secondary kind of tiler. A commander I actually think is slightly better than Arwen, so is next up on our honourable mentions, is Elro here. So he provides decent healing as well as a little bit of troop support, which I think makes him superior. Equipment wise, you're going to look to want to give him uh, a Mirkwood bow or potentially a Dirk, both with some kind of ranged boost, as most of your damage will be coming from your ranged units. Armor-wise, again, scale mail is a great choice. Head Headgear-wise, still remains similar. Trapper's hood, once again. And accessory-wise, something like the Hithlane, again, is brilliant. Harp of Lothlorien is also good. Uh, just either one with mend or sustain can be very useful pro for providing just additional bit of healing and some troop support. Skill-wise, why I think he's a little bit better than Arwen, in my opinion. So in his skill tree, you have the War Chant skill tree, which provides up to 30% bonus damage in the early rounds, which can be huge. And he also has the Loyal Followers skill tree, which once again can buff his damage, and also the sub skills can reduce damage as well. Additionally, he does also have Half Elven and Boon, which again can increase damage and reduce damage taken. For early tiling, I'd recommend maximising War Chant first and foremost, 
Reason for this being you get that massive 30% increase in damage for the first, which slowly erodes over the first four rounds. Underneath War Chant, he does have an underrated amount of healing. He has both the Relief and Level-Headed skill tree, which are exactly the same as the uh, the two healing skills that are on Dwalin, and is the reason why we use him for early tiling. So Elra here is definitely an under uh, underrated commander for healing. You can then put points into Half Elven skill tree and Boon if you want, which will buff the defense and speed of your units, and Boon will either reduce their physical damage taken by up to 15%, or increase physical damage dealt, both of which are very useful buffs and make Elra here a very underrated uh, early Tyler, so he definitely gets a mention here. Next up on honourable mentions is Celeborn. I don't see him used very often, particularly in PvP. The reason for this being you almost have to be in Lothlorien, so you have to use March Wardens, which is why a lot of people don't use him for early tiles, as they see the levelling as a bit of a waste. However, if you're looking for just someone who can provide good tiling, Celeborn can be very strong as he does provide your units with uh, some very strong buffs. For example, Grey Elf, once fully uh, has 15 points in it, you do gain a 15% chance for your units to evade damage and that's effective every single round. And the sub skills can also provide additional bonus damage for your ranged units. Additionally, under the Y skill tree, you do also get access to Magical Barrier, which can massively uh, improve the defense of your units, again, helping to reduce that damage taken, which can make him an effective Tyler. The fourth commander on my special mentions list is Aragorn, King of Men. Equipment-wise, you're going to want to live it, give him any similar equipment to what we've seen before, but particularly focused around Might. You want to kind of buff his might as much as possible and also try and reduce that damage taken by his melee units. Skill wise, he actually has a very underrated amount of healing. Under his Alessar skill tree, you do have an enormous amount of healing. So the Alessar skill itself uh, means that every third round, two of your units recover 160% HP and also have an additional chance of recovering that again. Then you also have Elven Blessing, which will provide an additional 60% healing and again with a chance to activate again. So every three rounds, if you hit both of those procs and both healings happen again, you get an enormous amount of healing every three rounds. This can make him a very, very effective Tyler. In addition to this, he also has under the same skill line, Exorbitance, which can allow your units to just do a flat increase in damage, which again is very useful against early tiles. These skills aren't recommended in his PvP build, so if you do plan on using him uh, later on into your season, you definitely have to respec him and take points out of this, but at least for early tiles, this healing is very effective. And last but not least, on my special mentions list, I do have Gandalf the White. Equipment-wise, you're going to want to equip him the same way as you do Gandalf the Grey, so something like a Carver with Smite, or a Noldor Sword with Mind Split, followed by Scale Mail, or, uh, or the wizard's cloak and then headgear wise you can go with trapper's hood or I actually for Gandalf the white prefer the bone mask and then accessory wise again the worn out smoking pipe can be very effective for him as you would have guessed the reason Gandalf the white is an effective Tyler is he does have very similar skills to uh, Gandalf the grey but there's a few areas where he does actually have a few better skills Similar to Gandalf the Grey, we're going to want to put a point in Blindside. Whilst we don't have the Grey to activate healing, Blindside is still very useful as it does provide that early round stun. And similarly, we also want to take Wizard for the early round stuns again. So similar to Gandalf the Grey, Gandalf the White can inflict stuns on those first two rounds. Uh, so your opponents basically are, unless they have stun immunity, unable to deal any damage at all. From then on, you're going to want to put points into the white skill tree. This just increases Gandalf the Grey's focus damage dealt, but more importantly, it grants you access to Magical Barrier, which if the more and more points you put in, the more defense your units get and the less damage you take, making him a very good tile taker. And with that, that's everything I have to offer in regards to recommended good side starting commanders. I will look into doing a similar video also for Evil Side, 
If you've enjoyed, please consider dropping a like and consider subscribing. It does make a massive difference to me and the growth of my channel. So I would really, really appreciate that. I do upload regularly and will continue with the Rise to War guides in the future. And anyway, with that, I really hope to see you on the next one.